What if humans could merge with machines? Imagine having the strength of a machine, the intelligence of a computer, and the durability to survive almost anything. What if you could enhance your body with cybernetic parts and become something more than human? Today, we'll explore the amazing world of Cyborg, the half-human, half-machine superhero from the Justice League. We'll look at how close we are to making Cyborg's abilities a reality and the challenges we would face along the way. So stick around because this is going to be an exciting journey into the future of human augmentation. Cyborg's story begins with a young man named Victor Stone. Before he became a superhero, Victor was a star athlete with a promising career ahead of him. But his life took a tragic turn when he was caught in a terrible accident that left him in the verge of death. To save his son, Victor's father, a brilliant scientist, used advanced cybernetic technology to rebuild his body, giving Victor a second chance at life. But at what cost? Much of his body was replaced with machine parts, turning him into the superhero we know as Cyborg. Cyborg's body is a combination of human tissue and advanced technology. He's equipped with super strength, making him much stronger than a normal human. His mechanical parts also make him incredibly durable, also to survive impacts and damage that would be fatal to an ordinary person. But what makes Cyborg truly unique is his ability to interface with technology. He can hack into computer systems, control machines with his mind, and access vast amount of data in an instant. If Cyborg were real, could we create technology like this today? Let's find out by looking at where we stand with cybernetics in the real world. Believe it or not, we're already starting to develop technologies that mirror some of Cyborg's abilities. One of the biggest advancements we've seen in recent years is in the field of prosthetics. In the past, prosthetic limbs were often simple mechanical devices with limited movement. But today, we're having bionic limbs that are far more advanced. Take for example, the Luke arm, named after Luke Skywalker from Star Wars. This bionic arm allows users to control it using their remaining muscles and nerve signals, giving them a level of control that was unthinkable just a few decades ago. Another exciting area of research is in brain-computer interfaces, or BCIs. Companies like Neuralink, founded by Elon Musk, are working on devices that can connect the human brain directly to computers. These devices would allow people to control machines just by thinking, much like Cyborg does when he interfaces with technology. While this technology is still in its early stages, the potential is huge. Imagine being able to control a robotic arm, a computer, or even a car with nothing but your thoughts. In the future, BCIs could open the door to all kinds of new possibilities for people with disabilities or even for everyday use. But what about Cyborg's ability to control large-scale systems, like hacking into global networks or controlling entire armies of drones? That level of technopathy, controlling technology with your mind, might be further off, but the ground is being laid. We're already seeing AI control systems and drones used in military and industrial applications, so it's not too much of a stretch to imagine a future where humans can interface with these machines. So how would Cyborg's technology work? If Cyborg were real, his body would rely on a seamless connection between his brain and his machine parts. This is called brain-computer integration. Right now, scientists are developing ways to connect the human brain with external devices using brain-computer interfaces. These devices can pick up electrical signals from the brain and use them to control machines. For example, some BCIs allow people to control prosthetic limbs, making them move just by thinking. But Cyborg's level of control, where he can instantly hack into systems or control machines across the globe, would need much more advanced technology. One of Cyborg's most impressive abilities is his technopathy the power to control and communicate with technology at will. This would require a deep connection between the brain and the internet, which doesn't exist in the real world. However, some experts believe that we might be able to create something similar by combining brain-computer interfaces with artificial intelligence. AI could help interpret the brain signals and translate them into commands that machines can understand. While it's still science fiction, 
we're getting closer to understanding how this might work in the future. Cyborg also has built weapons, like his famous sonic cannon and various arm blasts. To create something like this in real life, we'd need to find a way to merge human biology with advanced weapon systems. Right now, the closest thing we have are military exosuits which allow soldiers to carry heavy loads and enhance their strength. These suits can be equipped with weapons and tools but they are still external systems that a human has to wear. For a real life cyborg, we'd need to find a way to integrate these systems directly into the human body without causing harm. It's a challenging prospect but not entirely impossible. Then let's talk about challenges and ethics of becoming cyborg. While the idea of becoming a real-life cyborg sounds exciting, it comes with a lot of challenges. First, there are physical limitations to the human body. Our immune systems are designed to reject foreign objects, which means integrating cybernetic parts could cause serious health problems. For example, people with prosthetic limbs sometimes experience pain or discomfort because their bodies don't fully accept their artificial parts. Scientists are working on ways to reduce these problems, but we're still a long way from creating cybernetic limbs that feel as natural as our own. Another challenge is power. Cyborg's body runs on some kind of advanced energy source, but in real life, we'd need a way to power these devices for long periods of time. Right now, most prosthetic limbs and brain-computer interfaces rely on batteries, which need to be recharged regularly. For example, for someone like Cyborg, who is constantly using energy-intensive weapons and machines, would need much more efficient energy and long-lasting power sources. It's one of the biggest technical hurdles we'd have to overcome. But perhaps the biggest challenges aren't technical, they are ethical. If humans had the ability to control machines with their minds, what would stop someone from hacking into private data or taking control of entire systems? Privacy would be a major concern in a world where technopathy is real. There's also the issue of inequality. Right now, advanced prosthetics and brain-computer interfaces are incredibly expensive, which means that only a small number of people can access them. If cybernetic technology became more advanced, it could create a divide between those who can afford to enhance their bodies and those who can't. This raises important questions about fairness and who gets access to these life-changing technologies. These technologies could have life-changing benefits for people with disabilities, allowing them to regain mobility, independence and a better quality of life. But while the future of cybernetics looks promising, it's important to remember that we're still in the early stages. There are many challenges to overcome, both technical and ethical, before we can create a real-life cyborg. But as technology continues to advance, the line between humans and machine will continue to blur. And who knows what amazing possibilities the future holds. So what do you think if cyborg was real? Would you want to enhance your body with cybernetics? Would you like to control technology with your mind? or maybe have a bionic arm that's stronger than any human. Let us know in the comment section. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, stay enthusiastic.